Well, do you now? Is my screen is visible? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Let's. Uh, we need to start the saponification reactions. And what is saponification reaction actually? And soap and detergents. Okay. Do we have written the harmful effect of drinking alcohol and some this? Tell me fast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So we need to start the saponification reaction. Saponification reaction. Okay. And why do soap work in hard water? Do we have discussed this one? And how does soap work? We have not discussed this one, no? No, sir. Okay. So give me a minute. Okay. In the saponification reactions, actually what we are going to study here is that in saponification reaction, uh, we can say simply here that this is a reaction between these uh, esters, normally esters, esters plus NaOH. Okay. And you know what are esters? Do you know what are esters? Esters are the compounds which are formed when carboxylic acid, carboxylic acids react with, with alcohol, alcohol in the presence of concentrated H2SO4. They give sweet smelling substance that is called esters, esters plus water. Okay. So you need to understood this one. So for example, if I'm having CH3COOH and let I'm having HCH3OH. This is methanol, methanol, and this is ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid. So when they react together in the presence of concentrated H2SO4, then in that case, this will be the ester will be formed. This will be CH3. C double bond O and this group, this group will attach this is going to form water here. This is going to form water. Okay. Plus H2O. And here we will see that this CH3COH and this CH3 group will join together. And this is called ester. Actually, the functional group ester, functional group ester is going to have like this structure. CO and there can be a hydrogen or an alkyl group but there must be an alkyl group means there must be a carbon chain so at least two carbon is needed for making a ester okay an ester here can be hydrogen also CH C double bond O O and then there must be a at least one carbon hydrogen okay so you need to understood that this is ethanoic acid when react with methanol it will gives you Methyl, this group which is attached to this one is known as methyl. So this is methyl. So we will write CS3 as methyl, methyl, and this is two carbon. So two carbon chain is eighth. And when this is known as ethanoic acid, okay, ethanoic acid, but this group COO minus group is known as O8 group. Wait, so this is eighth in for carbon carbon single bond and then O8. O8 group. So first of all, like we are just going to write the name of this one, CH3COONA. This is a very famous compound. So the name of this one is, what is the name of this one? This one is CH3. You write the name of sodium, sodium ethanoate, ethanoate. Okay, got it? Sodium ethanoate. So why? Because this group is of two carbon. So this is known as ethanoate. And it if it is three carbon like this, like this, if I'm having CS3, CS2, COO, NA, then the name of this compound will be sodium, the three carbon prop, then N carbon carbons, single bond, and then O8, sodium propanoid. 
but this is sodium salt of carboxylic acid because this is a carboxylic acid and this is a salt in it. So this is a sodium salt of carboxylic acid. This is sodium salt of, of carboxylic acid. Okay. But if I talk about this one, like CH3, CH2, COO, and I'm having there is C2H5 here. So this is ethyl group. And this actually, this is, this total is known as ester. This is an ester and the name of this ester is, why? Because there is an alkyl group, chain, then C double bond O and then R. This R can be same or this can be different depending on the type. Okay, so what's the name for this one? The name for this one is this group, which is attached with O is known as, like in the, here it is known as sodium. So we write sodium here, this C2H5 is ethyl group. ETH means two carbon chain. ETH means two carbon. And ethyl means alkyl group. Actually, this is C2H5 is ethyl. Ethyl. CH3 is methyl. Methyl. Okay. C3H7 is propyl. Okay. This is propyl. And they are all, they are all called alkyl group. Alkyl group. Why alkyl? Because they are part of alkane. When alkane is going to like this, two carbon alkane is C2S6. 2 carbon alkane is C2S6. But when one carbon is removed, okay, this two, this is 2 carbon alkane name is ethane. ethane. But when you, you remove one carbon, then it becomes a carbon chain. And the name for this one is not alkane. Now it becomes alkyl. This is C2H5 and this is known as alkyl group. Like this alkane name is ethane. So this alkyl group name is ethyl. Ethyl for two carbons. So the name for this one will be ethyl propenoid. Prop. Why prop? Because they are the three carbon prop. Then carbon carbon single bond in and then O8. O8 is the functional group. This one. Okay. You understood this one, everybody? Yes. Tell sir. Me. Yes. Now moving to the previous portion, saponification reaction. So this saponification reaction. Moving to this one again. So this is esters. Okay. When esters, sweet smelling substance are treated with, are actually treated with NaOH, then it will gives you sodium salt of carboxylic acid. Sodium salt of carboxylic acid. Sodium salt of carboxylic acid plus plus hydrogen, sorry, plus respective alcohol, plus respective alcohol, respective alcohol. Okay. Respective alcohol. So for example, if I'm just, what do you mean by the word respective alcohol here? So let me explain you what do you mean by the word respective alcohol. Respective alcohol means every ester is going to have its parent carboxylic acid and and alcohol uh, alcohol for example like every salt has its parent acid base for example i am having sodium sulfate in it to so forth so its parent base is naoh naoh and its parent acid is s2so4 likewise another calcium carbonate its parent base is caoh whole twice and its parent acid is h2co3 carbonic acid Similarly, when we are just going to have an ester like C2H5COO, CH3. So there must be its parent alcohol and parent carboxylic acid from which it is made up of. So its parent carboxylic acid is the, this number of carbon chain, this. This is C2H5COOH or we can say it's propanoic acid. And its parent alcohol is, here it is only CH3, so the parent alcohol is CH3OH. You understood? Understood? Tell me. Yes, sir. Okay. Now moving to the next part is, here, saponification reaction. So for example, if I'm having CH3COO, C2H5. Okay, and then we have NaOH. Then it will react with, uh, it will give you sodium salt of carboxylic acid. So this Na will react, this is the carboxylic acid chain. 
carboxylic acid and this is the this is the alcohol group which we get okay this this group we get from alcohols so this na is going to react with this na is going to react uh, means going is going to remove this group okay is going to remove this group and in place of this it will form CH3COONA and this is known as sodium salt of carboxylic acid and the name for this one is sodium ethanoid. Sodium ethanoate plus, plus this and this remaining is going to give you the respective alcohol C2H5OH. So this is the ethanol is the respective alcohol. You understood this one? Please note it down. Note it down fast. When you're done, please let me know, okay? Okay. Next is is everyone is has done this one or still doing someone? Done, sir. Done, sir. Done. Okay. So let's discuss further and have a question over it. Okay. Have you remembered the other properties of this one? Let me explain you this other properties also. That next, next we will going to solve the question over it. Okay. Like you know that carboxylic acids when react with metals, it will give you what? Salt plus hydrogen gas. Okay. And this will be CH3COnA plus H2. This is sodium salt of carboxylic acid. Similarly, if this CH3COH react with NaOH, it will give you what? CH3COO O Na again plus water this time. Why water? Because this is an acid and this is the base. So when acid react with base, it will give you salt plus water. Okay, got it? So let's have a question uh, over it, okay? That, that's we have done several questions. Let me explain you one more time that functional isomers we have studied. Functional isomers. What are fun functional isomers? Functional isomers are the compounds having same molecular formula but different functional group. And carboxylic acid and ester show same, same functional isomerism or same functional iso isomers. For example, in condensed form, if I write let, let you have the, let you first do the questions and then we will explain this one, okay? So, let you have first question. Over your screen. Just a minute. Here we have this question. Uh, question number 52. Okay, do question number 52, 52. A compound C with molecular formula C2S6O2 react with Na metals to form a compound R and evolve a gas which burns with a pop sound. Okay, note this question yes. please. Sir, we did this in the last class, sir. You did this question in the last class? Yes, sir. Last chemistry class, we did this question. Okay. Let's have the next question first then. Do this question number 57.
So we did this also. You did this? Yes, sir. Sure. Yes, sir, I have written it down. Okay. So this these questions, these questions we have practiced in the class. And if you are having any doubt regarding to this one, then we can proceed this one. If we get the time again, then we will do these questions. Okay. So purification reaction is just a reaction in which esters react with uh, NaOH to form. To form. Tell me. To form sodium salt of carboxylic acid and respective alcohol. Okay. So let's study the uh, soaps and detergents. Okay. Soaps and detergents. Again, soaps and detergents. So what are actually soaps? Soaps are the sodium salt of carboxylic acids. Sodium, sodium potassium salt of carboxylic acid. Okay. So if I talk about this one, that what are soaps? So soaps are the sodium potassium salt of long chain of carboxylic acid. So note it down. Long chain of, of carboxylic acid. Acid and this is we can say that noted down that soap are the sodium or potassium salt of long chain of carboxylic acid. Okay, and this is soap sodium salt. If you are talking about sodium salt, then it is uh means we can say that this is hard soap and potassium salt of carboxylic acid are soft soap. Soft soap means that like we have Johnson baby, which means which is going uh, gives you irritations when you open your eyes having soap on your face okay so these are called soft soap okay and hard soap means they give you irritations and they are hard they can remove your moisture on your face so they are hard they are sodium salt of carboxylic acid okay and you have seen that this is actually the representation of a long chain of hydrocarbon okay like we have c17 h35 C O O N A and this name of this one is sodium steroid. Sodium. Sodium steroid. Okay. So actually, actually, this is a hydrocarbon chain. Like this is a bond line structural formula for an hydrocarbon chain that you will study. For example, if you if you're going to write the formula for the uh C5 C7 H. Uh, 7 to the 14 and to 16. So if you want to write the bond line structure of this one, so this will be considered as first carbon, then second carbon here, then third, then fourth, then fifth, then sixth, then seven. This is the haptane. This is actually haptane. Okay. And if you want to write the name of butanoic acid, so one, two, three, okay. And then four, this is butanoic acid. One, two, three, four. So this is butanoic acid. Okay, this is butanoic acid. So you can, we don't re represent the hydrogen and carbon. Only hydrogen. We represent the functional group here. We don't represent the hydrogen and carbon in the bond line structure. Okay, like we need to make the structure of ethyne. So ethyne is this simple. Okay, this is simple ethyne. This represents double bond and this is the CA, C and here is one C. This is ethyne, ethyne, okay, got it? If you need to make pro propane, so one, two, three, or this is butane. And if you make butene, so butene is this one. This is but to in or butene, you can write butene. So this is the bond line structure. So in the soap and detergents, if you're talking about that, what are soap and detergents? Soaps is a sodium or potassium salt of long chain of Carboxylic acid. Please note it down. Sodiums are the hard soap. If this is sodium salt, then it is hard soap. Then potassium salt, carboxylic acid. Note, note this one. This is soap molecule. Please. Then, sir. Is there anyone who's still writing? Just a minute, sir. Done, sir. Okay, next.
Now, soap other than sodium and potassium are insoluble in water. For example, if I'm talking about why I'm saying that sodium potassium salt of long chain of carboxylic acid only. Okay. Why we are saying that soap are only the sodium and potassium salt of sodium metals or the potassium metals. Uh, okay. Or why they are the sodium potassium salt of carboxylic acid? Why not the magnesium salt? Why not the calcium salt? Because actually only the sodium and potassium salt of long chain of carboxylic acids are soluble in water. For example, if we have magnesium salt of carboxylic acid, okay, so this, for example, COOMG, so this will not be actually, or if I talk, write it like this one, C17H35MG. Sorry, C seventeen H thirty five C O O, and this is going to have valency one, and this magnesium is going to have valency two. So this will going to write it in whole bracket like this way. Okay, so I'm just writing this one like this way. Actually, this is insoluble in water. If we take the magnesium salt of carboxylic acid, if we take calcium salt of carboxylic acid, so only the sodium and potassium salt of carboxylic acids are soluble in water, and these are in soluble in water this is the reason why do soap soap do not work in hard water actually soap which is sodium salt of carboxylic acid or potassium salt of carboxylic acid it react with the magnesium chloride like magnesium chloride it means hard water contain magnesium chloride it contain calcium calcium chloride I mean calcium and magnesium salts are present in the calcium and magnesium salts are present in the tell me in the hard water so these salts salts are present are present in hard water in hard water so if they are present in hot water then what what is going to happen so this will react okay are you getting my point are you getting so this will react with this one this will there is a displacement reaction will take place and this will form c17 h35 coo mg or c17 h35 COO, this should be in whole bracket to whole bracket to calcium. And this form magnesium salt of carboxylic acid form calcium salt of carboxylic acid plus plus sodium chloride. So you need to understood this one. One thing that that uh, either the sodium salt of carboxylic acid or calcium salt of carboxylic, uh, carboxylic acid. Okay, they are insoluble uh, uh, magnesium salt or calcium salt. They are insoluble in water. Insoluble in water. Insoluble in water. Okay, so they, this sodium salt when added or soap when it is added to hot water, it react with the salt that is present in hot water, like magnesium salt and calcium salt, which is present in water, and form sodium, sorry, and form magnesium salt of carboxylic acid or potassium salt of carboxylic acid, which is insoluble in water and it does not work. So most of the salt most of the soap that we use uh, if we are using hard water so it get reacted with this calcium and magnesium salts and and which forms an insoluble scum or we can say that lather which is uh, or we can say that it is making it insoluble and which is not of no, no use okay so most of the soap is wasted unless and until uh, all the uh, all the magnesium salt and calcium salt has been uh, utilized by the soap and we are just adding more and more soap so you have seen this one also if you wash your hand with hot water hard water so uh, you will not feel much soapy okay but if you uh, wash your hand with the same soap with uh, normal water or RO water which is not having calcium salt or magnesium salt then uh, or soft water okay so it you will feel more soapy there okay so this is the reason that magnesium salt and calcium salt start reacting with the with the soap and forms magnesium salt of carboxylic acid or sodium salt of carboxylic acid okay so note it down please why do soap do not work in hard water just a minute so here is the here is the question why do soap do not work in hard water the reason is hard water contain impurities of calcium and magnesium salts okay which react with soap to form calcium slash magnesium salt of carboxylic acid which make it insoluble in water and make scum okay that's why 
or we can say that this is the reason why hard water note it down please Done? Noted? Yes, sir. Noted, sir. Okay. Next. Uh, preparation of soap. So, how can how can you prepare soap? So soap can be prepared when you have esters like C17H35 CO C4H8. Okay. And you react it with the uh, sodium hydroxide. This is a saponification reaction. So actually, this is sodium salt of carboxylic acid, long chain of carboxylic acid. And so this is the run by saponification reaction. So are prepared by saponification. And what are detergents here? So detergents are actually sodium salt of long chain of benzene sulfonic acid. These are not the actually we can say that these are the long chain, but not the carboxylic acid. These are the benzene sulfonic acid. Okay, and carboxylic acid is also known as fatty acid. So sometimes it is being written that sodium uh, uh, detergents and soaps are sodium potassium salt of sorry sodium sorry soap are uh, sodium potassium salt of long chain of carboxylic acid. Okay, so fatty acid may be also there. Carbo instead of carboxylic acid, fatty acid can also be there. But what are detergents? Detergents are actually the sodium salt of long chain of benzene sulfonic acid. Benzene sulfonic. This is the benzene ring, and this is the sulfonic acid. Okay, and uh, H is being removed here, and this instead of this here we have Na. So note it down. This one.
noted tell me done no oh, sir done yes you jobita done no sir i'm writing write it write it fast Then, sir. Okay. Next, what are the advantages of soap over the detergents? So, what are the advantages of detergents over soap? Okay. Means how soap means detergents, how detergents are better than soap. So, you know that detergents can work in hard water. Okay. While soap do not work in hard water. So, this is the first advantage. Second, the cleaning action of detergent is hard, harder than soap. Means detergents uh, clean well. I mean the power of cleaning in detergent is well as compared to that of soap. So that's why where the cleansing action is, we need harder cleansing action. We use detergents like in clothes, like similarly in uh, in uh, cleaning the utensils. So we use detergent there. Detergents can work in acidic medium also because they are the derivative of mineral acid. Because mineral acid means uh, actually, carboxylic acid is is a weak acid and mineral acid is strong acid. We can consider here. So they can work in an acidic medium also. So where there is a medium of acidic medium, so where uh, cleansing is not done, so where there we can use detergents also. Okay. So moreover, hydrocarbon chain. The important is that the hydrocarbon chain that is being used in preparing of detergent is obtained from petroleum. Petroleum means like uh, like we have petroleum hydrocarbon generally we uh, have like uh, grease uh, like petrol diesels okay so similarly the hydrocarbon chain that we are using in preparation in preparation of soap or oh, sorry detergents that is obtained from petroleum petroleum okay but the hydrocarbon chain that is obtained for preparing of soap is obtained from the uh, natural fats that's why they are called fatty acids, natural fats, carboxylic acids. Okay. So we can see that the natural, there we use uh, fat for preparing the soap and the hydrocarbon chain that is being used for preparation of soap is obtained from fats. But in case of, in case of detergents, this hydrocarbon chain is obtained from petroleum. So it, uh, in during the preparation of detergents, we are not, we are not dependent on the natural things. We just we are just we can easily obtain this from the hydrocarbon chain. So this is hydrocarbon chain is used in making detergents is obtained from petroleum, which decreases the dependency, which decreases the dependency on dependency, dependency. Okay, on natural products like animal fats and plants. So please note it down this one also. Done.
Noted everyone. Tell me fast. Noted. Yes, sir. Dan. Noted, sir. Okay. Next. If I talk about the next one is how do actually uh, the one demerit of what is the one demerit of soap? Sorry, uh, what is the one de demerit of detergents? The detergents are not biodegradable. Okay. So there is a demerit disadvantage of detergents that these, these are not biodegradable while soap are biodegradable because they are made up of uh, animal, animal fat. Okay. So that's why they are biodegradable. So so if I talk about that, how do actually soap and detergents work? Working of soap and detergents. So let me explain you that how do actually soap and detergents work? So this is how do soap and detergents work? This is the long chain of hydrocarbon. Okay. Before this, uh, let me explain you first of all that what are polar substances and what are non-polar substances. So let me explain you that what are polar and what are non-polar. What is polarity actually? Actually, there are some elements that are considered in chemistry are considered to be as electronegative elements, means most electronegative element, and there are some electropositive elements. And when uh, there is an electronegativity or electropositivity difference, then as a result of which the electron that are participating in the bond distort the bonded pair of electrons. Let me explain you in simple language that, for example, if this is hydrogen and this is chlorine, they are togetherly making bond. So this is, there is a covalent bond between these two. You know the chlorine is going to have 287 electronic configuration and that of hydrogen is only one. So hydrogen cannot give its electron permanently to the chlorine because it will not be stable having the electronic configuration zero. It will be stable when it is going to have the nearest noble gas electronic configuration that is of helium that is two. So it will not give its electron permanently like in sodium chloride. The sodium give one electron to chlorine because it is wants to have this stable electronic configuration to it. Okay, so in that case, sodium can give one electron permanently to chlorine, but hydrogen will not give. So what actually is going to happen here is just you need to concentrate here that they are going to make a sharing bond. They deal, they, they will try to make the sharing bond. Okay. Actually, this there is there should be a line between these two atoms. Okay, and the chlorine, there should be an electron cloud that is forming and that is helping the uh, both the uh, chlorine and hydrogens to attain stability. But in reality, it does not happen. Actually, this chlorine being an electronegative, more electronegative element because it is going to have more electrons. So it attracted the bonded pair of electron towards itself. Means actual line is this, actual line is this, but the, the electron cloud is distorted. Means electron cloud is like this. That this is the electron cloud, but it gets more distorted towards chlorine more. And less this electron cloud get distorted. Okay. This is more towards chlorine, but less towards towards hydrogen. Still, it is a covalent bond here, but being the electron shifted towards chlorine gives a slightly negative charge to the chlorine because the electron has shifted the negatively charged particle that is electron is shifted towards chlorine. And this hydrogen will acquire a positive charge, slightly positive charge. Because of that, uh, we can simply say here that uh, this electron of hydrogen has shifted towards this one, towards chlorine. So this will acquire a positive charge. Now, this is called polarity. Now, the poles have developed. A negatively charged particle and a positively charged particles have developed in this molecule. So H is, HCl is a polar compound, which is, which is going to have polarity. This is polar compound. Similar with the water also. The most electronegative elements are fluorine, uh, chlorine, fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen. Okay. They are generally polar in nature. They are polar substance, which are going to have means when chlorine is going to make bond with some other elements, it generally become polar in most of When oxygen is going to make bond with some other element, it generally become polar. But like O2, O2, N2, Cl2, they are not, they are not polar. Why? Why they are not polar? Because when hydrogen react with another hydrogen atom, they will have the more uh, same attraction power. So nobody is going to attract. Means they are of same power. So they their uh, electron cloud will not get distorted because both of them are having same power. Both both will attract the electron clouds properly and equally. So this is called non-polar. 
Similarly, when hydrocarbon, hydrogen and carbon is going to make bond, their polarity is not disturbed because hydrogen and carbon are not so, their electronegative difference is not so much that, that they will distort the bonded pair of electron and this will attract the negative charge, this will attract the positive charge. No, they are almost means electron cloud is not distorted in case of carbon and hydrogen when because carbon is not so electronegative. So this is compound is considered to be as non-polar compound, non-polar. Are you getting my point? Non-polar compound. Means poles are not developed. So like methane, the hydrocarbon chain, whatever their carbon and hydrogen bond is there, their polarity is not developed. Why? Because there is uh, hydrogen and carbon have almost same uh, electronegativity. Okay. So the, as a result of which, this hydrocarbon chain, this hydrocarbon chain, okay, is considered to be as non-polar in nature. Non polar in nature in nature and one thing importantly you need to understood here is that that polar substance dissolve in polar and non-polar dissolve in non-polar like SCL can easily be dissolved in water because they both are polar okay like you have seen that uh, when we are just painting we, when we paint some house or something we add kerosene oil to it because kerosene is non-polar non-polar okay and uh, paint is also non-polar. So paint can be easily dissolved in non-polar substance like kerosene, petrol, but it will not get dissolved in water. Okay, because, because of the polarity difference, because of the polarity difference, or we can say that because one is polar, another one is non-polar. You understood this one? Are you getting this one? Tell me fast. Yes. Okay, so here, this uh, actually dirt and grease, Dart is dart is actually non-polar in nature, non-polar, polar in nature, and water is polar in nature, in polar in nature. Okay, so they don't have friendship. Water and dirt cannot dissolve each other because they don't have, they don't like each other. Okay, this is polar, this is non-polar. They have opposite, so they cannot be dissolved. So grease cannot be dissolved in water. So you cannot, uh, they, you cannot. Remove the dirt, which is oily, which is uh, in non-polar nature with the help of water. So you need a substance that can intermediate with this one. Means the one end of that substance will get attached with this one. And another attach, uh, end of this one get attached with this one, with water. We need a friend which has both, both type of quality. One end of this one should be polar so that it can attach with the dirt. And other end should be non-polar. Sorry, one end should be one one end should be non-polar, which get attached with the dot non-polar, and another end should be polar, which get attached with the water. So this is the same molecule of uh, of uh, we can say that of soap or detergents. Okay. So this is this end is the non-polar end, non-polar end, and and this end is the this end is the ionic end or we can say polar end, polar end. So this is, this end get attached with the water. Okay. And this get end attached with the grease or oil or dirt, oil or dirt. This end is called hydrophobic end. Hydrophobic, phobic means which is water repelling. And this one is water loving or water, water uh, hydrophilic, hydro, hydrophilic end. So when we when we add uh, soap or detergents to the dirt, okay, this is dirt. So this dirt, in this dirt, this hydrocarbon chain get attached with the, actually Na is an ionic compound, this keep on moving everywhere. Okay, we are just having sodium salt, but it will be moving everywhere, okay, uh, in the solution. So I'm just making this one, but actually this is CO minus. Any positive I'm just making here, okay? So this is COO, COO, NA. This one is similar, okay? NA and same with this one, okay? And same for this one. Okay. And this is, and this sodium keep on moving everywhere. Okay. This is called micelles. 
muscles okay so one end of this one get attached this is hydrophobic end or the hydrocarbon chain which is non polar in nature get attached with the dirt another end get attached with the water molecule this so this end get attached with the water molecule okay so here i'm just making it with this end get attached with water molecule like this way okay and moreover when you agitate this clothes when you hit it with something okay so there is not only one missile there are more than one missiles are formed more than million means large number of missiles are formed everywhere they had the dirt present the missiles is formed so when you agitate them the two missiles which are negatively charged okay like one missile here dirt okay and uh, this one is also having coo minus okay when you miss when you when these come closer there is a repulsion between negative negative charge and this will repel each other so the dirt so the dirt can easily comes out from from the clothes okay when you hit it again and again with okay when you scrub it with the uh, with the uh, something okay in the machines uh, uh, you see that the clothes are moved okay again and again so the missiles come closer to each other and due to repulsion between them uh because of this negatively charged uh, molecules they come together so they comes out of the clothes and when you when water is thrown out because this is uh, actually attached with water missiles ends are attached with water so when you water is coming out so it will uh, the dirt will also comes along with the water okay so this is this is how actually this comes moreover detergents decreases the surface tension surface tension or uh, and or uh, we can say that increase and it increases the wettability wettability means the waters uh, the ability of water to wet something if it is having some values uh, if we measure it some in some values so it also increases the wettability power means more if you if you uh, wipe your clothes means uh, if you are just cleaning your your something like uh, mirror or something with normal water it will not wet it like properly but if you if you are having any and uh, something uh, which with like detergent waters or some so, uh, shampoo water okay so it will wet it more appropriately so it decreases means we can say that wettability power is also increase when you when soap is added or detergents is added so that's also helping uh, that's ha also helping cleaning okay so here is the answer for this one that how actually uh, the cleansing action of soap is here so uh, we can write it cleansing action of soap okay note it down in your copy a molecule of soap is made up of two parts a polar part and a non polar part okay are you getting this one tell me fast yes sir okay so one part is polar part polar means which is going to have charges okay another one is non polar part this is hydrocarbon part the polar part which is ionic which is ionic bracket it is called hydrophilic ionic means which is going to have co minus and any positive okay and a positive so this is ions so the hydrophobic uh, the part which is ionic is called hydrophilic means water loving get attached with the water molecule while the non polar part which is made up of long chain of hydrocarbons and is called hydrophobic and hydrophobic and get attached with the dirt which is also non polar okay thus a cluster is formed around the dirt this is called missiles this is called missiles the soap missiles are negatively charged why because actually this is co na but na is getting ionized and it will it, it keep moving everywhere in the in the water okay so actually we have co minus co minus okay and when other co minus comes together coo minus comes so this is negatively charged this become negatively charged so we can say the soap missiles are negatively charged due to presence of hydro carboxylate ion carboxylate ion means co minus ion okay ions uh, at the surface uh, ions at the surface repulsion between the similarly charged vessels keep them dispersed in the solution okay means when you when you uh, agitate it when this negatively charged particle come together they will repel each other and the dirt will come out okay so we can say that the missiles keep them dispersed in the solution due to this the dirt comes out of the clothes and other stuffs thus remove with the help of water okay Note it down, please. 
जाते जाते मैंने उस... Done. Tell me, please. One minute, sir. No, okay. sir. Answer. Okay, do this one also, the next part. Note this portion also. That soap decreases the surface tension between the water molecules, which help water to wet or which increases wettability. Okay. So please note this one. And have you made this... Uh, these diagrams properly. Please make, make these diagrams also. Every student should not miss the class because you have a very good opportunity that only one hour is there. Out of 24 hours, you are just preparing. But when a teacher is there to teach you, so it is requested means for, to every student that they must at least participate in the one hour class, which is just, you just need to open your laptop or mobile phone, whatever you are using. Okay, just do the class. And then at the end, what do you want, what do you want to do? Do it. But do not miss the class. Because if you are just lagging your class, something that the teacher is going to teach you, you are lagging that one. Okay. So this is very important. 
teacher must be there. You do not miss that class, okay? Only one hour so, class. There right? na? Okay, done everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So in the next class, note down the topic that we're going to study in the chemistry class. Uh, questions, important question discussions. Okay. Important question discussion and uh, of, of carbonates compound chapter because this chapter is finished. And after that, if the times remain, then we'll start the revision of acid, basin, and salts. Okay. Or any chapter whichever you like. Okay. Revision will be started. Okay. Uh, yes. So can you take the revision of metals and non-metals? Okay, we can take it. And if you are having any doubt in any topic, so please okay. send it to send means send the message to our team. We'll provide you a video lectures that will be uh means that will be short and that you can easily revise that one by by doing it one time. Okay. So if this is means very used to topic, then we can provide you the video lecture also, and then we can we are just going to revise.